Vodafone is undergoing a significant transformation behind the scenes to become a more software-oriented cloud-native company that can be in greater control of its own destiny and take full advantage of the digital services market. And to find out more about this, I'm talking today with Ahmed El Sayed, UK CIO and Europe Digital Engineering Director at Vodafone. So Ahmed, great to talk to you today. Thanks very much for joining us. So um, Vodafone looks to be positioning itself as more of a software-oriented tech co that has a build, not buy approach to its enabling technology. Is that an accurate overview of Vodafone's current IT strategy? I think it's, it's, it's a very accurate one, actually, Ray. So as you rightfully said, we're trying to, I mean, we see that the future is about our digital engagement with the customers and offering the right products at the right time. And for this, we need to have the right agility. We need to be able to co-create with our customers. And we see that the only way to do this is actually to build our own technologies rather than buying it. So for sure, we're not building 100% of everything, but at least the core digital engagement, like our apps, our portals, this is something we would love to build end to end. Okay, so uh, with that transformation in mind, Vodafone stated last year, that it plans to add 7,000 software engineers to the 9,000 it already has. Uh, is that still the plan? And if so, how is that progressing? Uh, and has the retraining of the existing staff who will transition their roles already begun? Yes, it's, it's a huge one for us. And probably you see also many of the big tech companies have put very big announcements that they are looking forward to recruit lots of software developers. So definitely it's not an easy an easy target to, to look for. But from the amount of, of growth we're looking forward to bring to the company, from the fact of, again, moving from a buy strategy to a build strategy, we believe that, yes, we, we're aspiring for 7,000 and even more. So 10,000 is where we're starting the journey, but we're even going beyond this. And we hope that we'll be able to recruit more and more as well as we go through the journey. As you said, it would be a mix of upskilling and recruiting from, from the community as well to join Vodafone in such a great journey. Upskilling will make sense in many areas, like for example, in our core telecom areas, we have great engineers that have great expertise on the radio network, on the core networks as well. So we're now working with our colleagues to upskill them so that you can even build these future networks. And probably you heard the, the term of open RAN, which is we're opening up the network as well to make it more fit for innovation. And then you can build also some transformations on the network side. When it comes to the digital side, our engagement, like our apps and portals, this is where we're really recruiting heavily since we see that the future is all about our digital transformation and being able to engage much better with our customer through our digital channels. And that's where we'll be building lots of assets, lots of new journeys, lots of new products that require to increase our number of software developers we have. And that's, that's why we're starting for the 7,000, I can say 7,000 plus on the, on the near future. For, for this to happen, it requires lots of transformation behind it. So, I mean, this, this is not just the recruitment piece, but we're evaluating really everything internally. Are we fit for software engineers? Do we have the right productivity tools for them so that they can come and deliver from day one? Do we have the right technical career path for them to progress and be able to still add technical value to, to the company while they're progressing on their career? working with new technologies, getting better, bigger uh, responsibilities. So I think there's lots of things we're doing there. Also, even building an employer branding, what we call Vodafone Engineering, where we would like our software engine to find it and belong to it. And we'll be having lots of external and internal engagements just to showcase how we're becoming a software house and being very open about it with the open source community externally and internally as well. Okay, interesting. Um... So in terms of the uh, tools and capabilities that you'll need, uh, what role will cloud platforms play in Vodafone's tech transformation? And is there a role here for public cloud platforms? And if so, which ones and why? Cloud is, is a huge part of our strategy, actually. So we're moving, we're moving into a setup of depending on public cloud and private clouds, depends on the use case, we'll find where where we will shift the workload of our assets. Uh, so you can say it's, it's more of a hybrid cloud kind of strategy. 
When it comes to public cloud, we see great benefits, especially on scalability. When we have a great product, we know that it will scale, it scale quite fast as well. And the beauty of cloud, it gives you this automatic scalability. Just to give you an example, we had just recently uh, the new iPhone launch that we start selling within Vodafone and the amount of, of sales that comes on the first couple of weeks is quite huge. So on the old days, you used to have like dedicated servers the whole year just to cater for a couple of, of high weeks of, of sales trading. But now with the use of the cloud, actually it automatically scales out 100% automated without any human touch to cater for any new demand that comes on the peak of any promotions. And then it scales down again after uh, the promotion is, is finished. We're working actually with almost all the hyperscalers. So we're working today very actively with AWS and with Google on their cloud platform. On AWS is mainly where we're hosting our digital assets, like the apps and the portals. With Google, we have announced a big deal where we're moving most of our data to Google Cloud Platform. And we're re actually we're redesigning all the data models there to enable us to build great AI models on top so that we can bring to the customer the value they're looking for. We're working also with Microsoft on their Azure platform. So that's a third place where we'll be moving some of the assets we have there. And we're using lots of tools from the three players. So it's a mix of public and private clouds working closely together. And internally, we're building a great platform now, what we call technology as a service, TAS. TAS basically will be an enabler that will integrate the private cloud and the public cloud in a seamless manner. So that will free up the developer's time so that they only build their products and then everything else is only automated for them. So the moment they build a new feature, they have the code ready, it's just a press of a button, this code will be automatically tested, the environment will be created on the best possible place, whether it's on AWS, again, on Google or on a local private cloud, the, code, the whole code will get deployed on this environment. Again, the, the whole automated testing for security, quality and everything done, and it gets released to the customer in a record time. So that's, that's our vision about uh, cloud and it's a partnership. Since also when you look at the telecom, we can also add lots of value to the hyperscalers because we have our edge network that's distributed across the country. So working like with AWS, we have also a big announcement there where they can deploy their features into our edge network. And this will enable us actually to give very low latency for gamers, for example, or for industries that require such, uh, such a very low latency kind of setup and we can make use of it to build very future innovations as well. So definitely it's a big partnership and public cloud is a huge part of this. Uh, so with all this in mind, uh, how important is the development of open APIs to what Vodafone is hoping to achieve? And is Vodafone an active supporter of the TM Forum's efforts on open APIs? So, so yes, for us, I mean, APIs definitely has been, has been there forever. I mean, we, we use it every day in everything. We, we always think of our technology as more of like a Lego game. So we'd like to build lots of enablers or lots of components that if we would like to provide any product to our customer, you just plug in together the different kinds of the puzzle, let's say, and then you have a new product that you can offer to externally. And to be able to plug and play, this integration should be API based. That's the best approach to make it very flexible and to be decoupled in a way that gives you the speed and innovation you're looking for. So for us first internally, it's very important for us. We're putting an API mandate that everything should be exposed over an API with a certain standards, cert certain security and features behind it as well. And besides of this, we're also actively considering the external opportunity. So we see that we have lots of features that probably not only our customers, but the enterprises, even the startups will can benefit from and the other corporates on the market. And that's why we have an active discussion of yes, being part of monetizing our APIs externally, selling our products as an API. So how can we treat an, an, an API based product into, into the market? And it's not only a technology thing, it's an end to end business domain that we're focusing in with the right expertise on the commercial side and on the technical side as well. As part of this, having standardization of the APIs is super important. And that's why, yes, we're, we're an active partner to the TM Forum to ensure that all the APIs we exposed are following the standards of the TM Forum whenever definitely that's the right thing to do and that enables us to integrate easier uh, to the external world. This will not even stop there as part of our API strategy as well. We're working on a great developer experience that they can easily integrate to the APIs, find the documentation, play with it and also launch with it. 
And definitely this comes also with a very huge engagement with the developer community in general. So we'd like to understand also what the developers needs on the APIs when it comes from the telecom industry, how we can make it very simple for them to integrate, how we're making to have the right value. So also it has lots of engagement activity uh, with, within the community to ensure that we're building the right things. Okay, so um, what does this all mean then for the Vodafone operational culture? Uh, and you mentioned the relationship there with the developer community. How can that be sort of uh, uh, improved and evolved over time? I mean, it's, 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 culture is super important since when, when you start entering this API economy and you start really selling things different, it's, it's like a different sales channel that you didn't have to use before. And a core success factor for this kind of a channel is to open up the organization. So we don't want to be seen again at this big corporate that's hard to work with, but we want to be more of an innovation platform that we can easily integrate with the external world. And we would like to co-create with the developers out there. So yes, we, have, we do have a heavy, aggressive kind of build strategy, but it doesn't mean that we build everything. There's great startups with great ideas there that we can partner with, we can work with to, to together get a bigger value to our customers. Internally as well, this is a big shift on the organization. We'll have lots of software engineers joining us. We also have to evaluate our leadership. So do we have the right engineering leads within the organization? And this is something we're upskilling some of our leaders and also bringing leaders from externally to join the journey. It means that we need to change the culture to be fit for this, how, how we define our, our operational uh, kind of SLAs, how we work together as a team. This what we call the DevOps culture. So we used to have this clear separation between in engineering and operations. This will not be the case anymore. We already started the journey. So we have lots of what we call system reliability engineers where the devs and ops are coming together just to build reliability feature and build lots of automation. We're trying by design from the beginning to the design a system that can be easily operated and fully automated in the future. Uh, we're trying again to automate as much as possible the whole quality checks, the whole infrastructure build and everything to ensure that we're focusing on the right things. And on top of this, since we're bringing great kind of talent internally and externally with different kind of experience, it's super important that we have the right psychological safety on, on our culture so that people can really be very open, share their ideas, and we, we build together across this. So that's a core focus in our environment. Plus the fact that also telecom used to, to be really strong on going through long-term kind of projects, but now we're moving into very short sprints. And actually we're even having now in, in many of our areas, we're just releasing daily new value to the customers. And this also requires a different kind of a trust culture, a culture that enables people to experiment and learn fast. So we always say, let's not do too much research, do the minimum possible to know what direction we should go in. But the moment we know the direction, let's experiment with it. If it's the right thing, we scale it. If it's the wrong thing, then we steal it or we stop it and move to the next big thing. So that's that's the change in mindset we started already in Vodafone now. Well, that sounds like a lot of really interesting developments going on at, at Vodafone there, Ahmed. And uh, you know, the word transformation is used an awful lot in this industry, but it really does sound like it applies to what's going on at Vodafone. So, uh, Ahmed, great to talk to you today. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time.